Greetings, Earthlings. We have RFF's last and final um, mod draft. This is the 12.0 or 42.0, something like that. We've done so oh many mock Yeah, we've done so many mock drafts, but this is the this is the final kink. Okay, and the way we're gonna construct this, we're gonna go two by two, right? We'll go two by two. I'll take the first two. Matt's gonna take the second two, etc. 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 And then, but this is going to be any news that we're hearing, any speculations that have been thrown out, um, along if, along with what we think that team needs or and or what that team. This is good. We're gonna try to make this the most realistic draft. So, with further outdo, what's the saying? I think it was moving on. Yep, okay, there we go. <laughs> we are entering the draft now. All right, so not going to be, I'll start the draft. Not going to be too, you know, I'm not going to do too much here. It's Bryce Young, right? So the Panthers, once upon a time, were at the ninth spot, traded with the Bears because they knew that they had to go get a guy. I personally think that guy is Bryce Young. There has been speculation of that guy being Will Levis. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. So I'm going to go Bryce Young at the one. Okay. And then recently, you've been hearing so much clamoring. Oh, the focus. So much clamoring about um, Will Levis going to or, you know, the Texans even trading out of that spot or the Texans picking up Will Anderson. Um and all the all of that kind of and look okay let's talk about this really quick although i think cj shot is very different very very different he still has this ohio state quarterback thing over over his head you know i, I can't think all right now of an ohio state quarterback that <laughs> apologies Allergy season. <laughs> Allergy season. It's crazy over here, man. That came out of nowhere. Also, had no control over that. But you know, the tech. You know, you know the Ohio State quarterbacks. They run a very simplistic offense. They have always have elite wide receivers. It's 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 interesting, and it's it's okay to kind of mention like you know they could be off on CJ Stroud. So what I'm gonna do. And it's really just because of this late Will Levis buzz. I'm not going to give the Texans. I'm not going to give them, you know, um, uh, uh, Will Anderson or any type of defensive player. I'm actually, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I really think like all this stuff and, and their board got leaked. You know, supposedly the board got leaked. Um, and Will Levis. I know that. Yeah, Will Levis was uh, one other dude. So um i'm gonna do it you know and you know this goes against a lot of things that we have said but this isn't us right this is what what, what i'm hearing this is what i'm seeing this is like me kind of just predicting patterns um will levis at the two spot <sighs> all right i think that people are going to be really surprised because all the things i'm hearing are the same thing will levis is slowly just climbing up draft boards all of a sudden and people were saying oh no his hype was purposely pushed down because everyone loved him so much and i don't know i'm ready to just see where all these guys end up but we have the cardinals at three again they're rumored to maybe trade out they um want to use this premium position to hopefully reel in someone who wants a quarterback but if they stay man like it, it's between jalen carter and tyree wilson for me They've had a lot of attention on their organization over the last few weeks with their owner and uh, their coach, like not gelling well with the media. I don't know if they want more like unwanted attention with the Jalen Carter stuff, but I know they love Tyree Wilson. So for the sake of that, I'm going Tyree Wilson here. Number three to the Cardinals. Okay. Okay. Long, big body freak athlete. They need so many pieces. He's one that can be a cornerstone, start building around. You got a scroll. You go to the thing. Colts. Oh, you got a scroll nowadays. Okay. Open no, right? Like, what, what, what is the blasphemy with Ty Tyree Wilson falling so far on the PFF? But Scrolly scroll, okay. 
the Colts, they, they have to take a quarterback here. I think there's 100% of taking a quarterback. It just depends who they want. And man, again, I don't know what's kind of going on with CJ Stroud, and now he's falling a little bit. I'm going Anthony Richardson here. Wow. <laughs> Come I on. I think he fits exactly what the Eagles OC wants to replicate from Philly. And if he had that game plan already on how he can make someone with that skill set work, I'm thinking Anthony Richardson will come in, fit great. They have a good defense, run game with Jonathan Taylor. And CJ Stroud starts to fall, maybe, but you're up with the Lions. Uh, so I got the Seahawks at the moment. Um, now, my brain. So. Jeez oh, Louise, dude. There's this report that I saw today that Jalen Carter has been crossed off the Seahawks big board. Mm. Um, that he is no longer seen as a, 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 a player that they're willing to invest in, especially at this point in time. Um, but um, having said that, I'm going to give the Seahawks Jalen Carter because it's all smoke. He's the clear-cut best player in this draft. He's going to where, you know, the Legion of Boom was created. Um, they're a, they're a defensive-minded team. And if Pete Carroll, right, if we want to remember where Pete Carroll came from, Pete Carroll came from USC, right? Pete Carroll had Matt Liner, um, Taylor Mays at one point in time, Reggie Bush, of course, a bunch of different types of personalities. He knows how to get to get through X player. Any player, uh, he held Errol. Th- as soon as Errol Thomas left the Seahawks, that dude, that dude's been all all wackadoo. Okay, and so if you just look at the structure on how he presents himself, I think Jalen Carter is going to be headed to the Seahawks, and I I don't care what I'm hearing. They're going to go after the best player in the draft, and um, something just tells me that it's just going to work. So we're going Jalen Carter, and then Will Anderson. You know, not even going to think about it too much. Will Anderson falling to the Lions would be, you know, if he gets to six, you know, if Will Anderson gets to six, I wouldn't be shocked if the Eagles tried to go up there and get him, you know, see if they can make a good de- good enough deal for the Lions, maybe giving them the 10 and the 30, something like that. All of that's been kind of speculated that they're going to try to make a good push to get one of these premium players. So, uh, Jalen Carter, Will Anderson off the board at five and six. What do you got for seven and eight? You know, I think this is another place where everyone thinks quarterback, quarterback. But I really believe, and especially from talking about what we're hearing, they love Jimmy G. They think that he can be the guy for the next year or two. They paid him a good chunk of change. And I just can't see the Raiders passing on Devin Witherspoon here. He fits what their defense wants to do. Great in man coverage. Get someone who can battle those wide receivers in the AFC West. So he's arguably the best corner in this draft. I'm going Devin Witherspoon to the Raiders. We get to the Falcons. And man, this is going to be, I think, one of the picks on Thursday where either it goes left or it goes right. Something crazy is going to happen here that's going to dictate the rest of the draft. A lot of people are saying, oh, Bijan, for sure. Get another weapon involved. That Arthur Smith offense would love him. I just think that's too high of a pick when you have Tyler Algier, who ran for 1,000 yards. And then I think, well, I mean, CJ Stroud, do they believe in, um, what's his name from Cincinnati? Desmond Ritter. Um, um, Desmond Ritter. God, I always blank on his name. Oh, my God. So, man, I'm, I'm going to stick with what I've been hearing the most, and the person that's tied is Nolan Smith. You have that Georgia connection. They take extra looks at these players from Georgia because they have the connections, the relationships, to learn the ins and outs of these players. He's a freak off the edge. He could maybe even play off the ball linebacker. He's going to be hopefully replicated into a Micah Parsons, but I'm going Nolan Smith here to Atlanta. All right, so we got Nolan Smith. To Atlante. Um, CJ Shroud has fallen. This is this is this is crazy. This is uh calamity, you know, but we've seen this before. Um, we've seen Justin Fields, who was projected to be that third pick to the 49ers X amount of years ago, um, fall. Um, Kenny Pickett, 
I don't know how well he was being pursued, but he was picked in the 20s, I believe, or 18, anywhere from 18 to 21, something like that. So this happens, okay, and people panic from time to time. I don't think Geno Smith was supposed to be a second round quarterback if that, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers. So this happens, guys. This definitely happens, and and we can anticipate something like this happening. Um, and so at nine, I, I don't think it's any question that they go and get um, Justin Fields, former left tackle, Paris Johnson Jr. to protect his left blind side. Um, boys athletic, like crazy work. Um, he's going to be able to fit in. Let's say things don't work out the best in training camp. You got yourself a premium right guard. Um or you got yourself a premium right tackle. Doesn't matter. He can play both tackles and probably both guard positions. Very athletic, very good. And then here we go at the number 10 spot. <sighs> mm. Like, I know where you're leaning. Well, the thing is, this is, I, I, once again, we're doing what the organization does i know Bijan would be really cool here it would be really awesome be really fun but we know harry roseman goes trenches he always goes trenches he always goes o-line d-line so we're not going to overdo it so with that being said eagles are going to be selecting Bijan fucking robinson baby let's go come on man come on get your get your fan base happy get your fans excited I understand this is a, a premium spot where you can definitely invest, you know, back into the trenches with some of these dudes. But in my personal opinion, personal opinion, after Will Anderson and after Jalen Carter, you know, maybe Nolan Smith, even not not even Tyree. Like there's the drop off is not even going to be that gargantuan if you want to try to get you know miles murphy at the 30 spot or lucas van ness if he falls like the edges in this class aren't it's not like it's not like nick bosa or miles garrett is in here and then they're like there's like a gap you know a lot of these cats like are pretty they're pretty close to each other so go get a running back invest into the trenches at the 30 spot if you would like um but I like this because it's gonna it's gonna get the it's gonna get the fans involved. The fans, I mean, Bijan, I mean, if if you think about it, I mean, Hurts and Bijan in the backfield, it's just like dirty. This is not even fair. It's it's just it just makes way too much sense for Howie Roseman to not heavily, heavily, heavily have that considered as a legitimate option. And then you look at the Dallas Cowboys, no flex, but they just lost their premier running back. They have Tony Pollard. I get it. But I feel like one thing that the Eagles can't do is pass up on a guy that they should have drafted and somehow that player goes to the Cowboys. Not saying, you know, CeeDee Lamb, of course, the Cowboys were before the Eagles, but Jalen Rager instead of Justin Jefferson. Like, let's not let's let's not overthink it. You know what I mean? Um, let's get a hit. Let's get someone that we know will hit. Not saying that you know a Jackson Smith and Jigba or a Kalijah Cansey or a My even a Miles Murphy right here won't hit. All I'm saying is I'm not in love with the idea. Let's go get a running back that'll hit. And then at 11, Tennessee Titans, Jackson, or not Jackson Smith and Jigba. I would love Jackson Smith and Jigba, but this is where CJ Stroud comes off Wait, the board. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, this you, is you. This is, my fault. Yeah, I'm, I'm tripping. I'm a bad. Breaks here, man. Okay, Can't okay. Can't be jumping DM That's shit. That's you. My bad, my bad. You, you go, you go, you go. My bad. I am going to say real quick, the only two teams that have visited with Bijan are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Philadelphia Eagles. So... Maybe they went ahead and said, no one's picking Bijan before 10. Let's just get him out here, get to know him, and we're taking him in that, you know, in that spot. So would would make a lot of sense here. But as you were saying, <laughs> Titans are my up. Fault, my fault. And, man, I just think that they're going to continue going in the trenches. They're in a little bit of a rebuild mode. Worst case scenario, you keep Ryan Tannehill, and he can still lead the ship to next year. Oh. If y'all suck, then you go get Caleb or Drake or one of the other quarterbacks in next year's draft. I'm going to play it safe here. Go Peter Skaronsky. Really versatile offensive lineman can be an all pro guard and be a really, really good tackle. So let's go get them someone to sure up on the offensive line. And then 
this is the best case scenario for the Texans. You go get a playmaker at number two, and oh wait, no, they took Will Levis in the top of the draft. Well, imagine if they would have taken Jalen Carter, yeah, and then you fall and you still get C.J. Stroud. True, but woulda, coulda, shoulda. You have to look at the pieces that you're missing, and you know you need weapons. You know you need defensive line help. Oh, man, I'm real tempted. I'm real tempted to go Jackson Smith and Jigba here. But D'Amico Ryans, man, I think he's going to want to win his way, okay. which is knowing the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. And I'm going Christian Gonzalez here for the Houston Texans. Okay. You have Derek Stingley on one side. Go get the best zone corner in this draft and pair them up because you know that you're going to need those, those two pieces giving your defensive line opportunities to go sack the quarterback, and that's what this defense revolves around. So I'm mixing it up a little bit. I'm going Christian Gonzalez because I think that one-two punch on the back end is going to start to identify what D'Amico Ryans wants to do, and that's just play hard-nosed defense, run the ball with, with Damian Pierce and Devin Singletary. Let Will Levis just do what he can control and keep the turnovers you know, on, on the smaller side. Okay. Green Bay's up. All right, Green Bay's up. I hate this. I hate this. Because I have two picks. I have two picks. And CJ Stroud is going to be neither of them. So he's really fallen. He's really fallen, which is unfortunate. Green Bay Packers, right here, right now. I'm thinking Packers, Packers, Packers. I'm not thinking quarterback. I think if if Jordan Love was going to be... The, the option out, they're going to stick with Jordan Love. He's been in the offense for, what, two, three years now. So um, that's that's their guy. That's who they're rocking with. That's who they shipped off Aaron Rodgers um, for. And so, oh, boy. I'm thinking here, who are they going? I'm not going to do the receiver thing because I don't – I still think – I don't think I they mean... – you don't think JSM would be dirty in that wide receiver trio? Of course he would. Of course he would. But it, it I, I don't, like I said, I, want, I, I have no faith that they'll do it. Zero. They just they, haven't done it. Max, I mean, you're not wrong. They, they, haven't, they haven't done it. Yeah. So people say it's because they had Aaron Rodgers, but something tells me I just think that's how they draft. And so um, Green Bay I think Packers. They think they can hit wide receivers in the later round like that's what they've always been like known for doing and they're also known for getting like bigger like more athletic freaky wide receivers not so much the jsn type right right i think here i think we see our first tight end go off the board here um and so i like dalton kincaid right here out of utah at the 13th pick i probably would have gone michael mayer um, but you know, when we were discussing how sad we were at the senior bowl to not see Dalton Kincaid, um, who had the invite, but later declined it because he was dealing with like a back issue. It was unfortunate because I was, I was letting a lot of people know before we even got there that he was going to be unguardable at the senior bowl. And, um, I think he'll be a great weapon for, um, Jordan love to facilitate too. So we're going there. And then now. The Patriots have this also this horrible thing. And so I have a I have a Patriots buddy. Um shout out Leo one time. Patriots buddy who is big big on, you know, the Patriots aren't gonna draft a receiver in the first round. That's something that they don't do. Last time they did it, it was Nikhil Harry and it bit him in the butt. And so we're looking we're looking, we're looking, we see Michael Mayer, we see Darnell Wright, we see Trenches, which is where they usually invest, and then I think with everything said and done, they're drafting Jackson Smith and Jigba, baby, JSN, you get your look, you get a 6-2 um, freaking Wes Welker, a guy that can just work the middle, he's going to be, he's, he's just going to be able to help out Mac Jones now, 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 day one, training camp training cramp training camp helping out um mac jones it's gonna get done we love it i'm sorry jackson smith and jigba is in your division and he's on the patriots i know you're tilted 
we move on. That's the one thing I hate about this Green Bay trade is now that we're behind New England rather than being in front of them and some shit like this is going to happen. I know it. Someone that we're targeting or someone that we have high on our board, they're just going to snatch them and it just always ends up that way. But we're here with the Jets at 15, their new spot after the Aaron Rodgers trade. Look at God. So if you haven't gone and checked out the Jets mock draft that we did yesterday with that breaking news, yeah. I'm going the same route. I'm going Darnell right here. I think that it's very likely they move Mekhi Becton back to left tackle, have Dwayne Brown, older guy, just be some security, and then start uh, Darnell Wright at right tackle. Solidify that offensive line, let Aaron cook. So that, that's the goal there. We get to Washington. Man, I'm tempted to go get CJ Stroud here because I don't know if Sam Howe is him. Is he that guy? Mm. But I know they also need a lot of corner help. Offensive line could definitely be improved. Man, I just, I can't see them going into this division again with the receivers they have to face and not have someone who can lock them down. And I know I've, <laughs> I know where you think I'm going here, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm actually going to go Deontay Banks mm -hmm. for Washington. Not Joey Porter Jr. Okay. I was thinking about it, but I'm going Deontay Banks. He's been growing on me, big, physical. I think he's the perfect mismatch on A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, um, and whoever the Giants go draft because they definitely need somebody. So I'm getting Deontay Banks. Let's see if Sam Howe has it in him to carry them over the next year. If not, they'll address it next year. Boom. Deontay Banks. Okay. You know what would be a great pick here? <laughs> <laughs> a little reunion of the family blood. Uh, uh, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. We ain't doing that. Who, who, who are the lame-ass Steelers going to draft? I don't even know. Like, where are the kickers, fired. Where are the kickers at? Special teams. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Steelers are so lame. Um... Okay, who are they going to go, actually? Hmm, I know these guys. I know how they work. I know how they operate. They can definitely invest in the trenches. I kind of think that's where they'll go. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I think we can go. Dang, dude. All right, CJ Stroud's falling. This is crazy. Um. I mean, Broderick Jones still on the board. Yeah. I think, I think they go with Anton Even Brian Harrison. Branch wouldn't be a bad pick. I but. think they go with Anton Harrison. The more <sighs> interesting, and just with Anton, I've been seeing a lot of good things about his pass work, his pass protection, and of course, I like I know it. His run game's not the best. Roger Jones is up, but it is going to be more of a project. And I, I probably, I'm probably being horribly biased right now. More than likely, I am. I just don't want them to get. Yeah, we'll do Broderick Jones. We'll do it. I, I think that's probably the smarter pick. I'm just being probably horribly biased. And then right here, Lions. Um, I don't know why it says wide receiver is a need for them. They got Will Anderson. Chino just got suspended, so he's out six games. This is true. Um, so they invested. Hmm. Ooh, no, we can't do CJ Stroud. We can't because uh, my man, um, Goff, he's only like 25 or 26. And if he keep winning. Yeah, he was balling last year, too. I, right. I think the organization really likes him also. That would be just like the most like mind F ever if they drafted a quarterback at a high spot with all that hype. It'll, it'll just, it'll, it'll mess up the dynamics. So. <sighs> their defense was abysmal last year and that was like one of the main issues of, as to why they weren't able to be as successful as they should have been and i'm starting to think that after everything that i've kind of seen that there there's this like notion that they're going to be zero linebackers taken in the first round i just think that's bs and probably now that I'm seeing it, this player could have gone to the Steelers. Now I'm, he's definitely a Steelers kind of guy. 
So I'm going to say that the Lions, who are definitely more old school, gritty, they pick up Will Anderson for the trenches. So you're going to have Will Anderson, Aiden Hutchinson, and your middle linebacker is going to be Jack Campbell right in the middle. So we're going to ignore the wide receiver, tight end, and, and defensive interior needs. And we're just going to get a guy that's 6'5". He's go- I mean, can you imagine a guy like Jack Campbell and... um what's wait isn't the dan isn't dan campbell the name of the head coach i mean what are we talking about like actually you know i'm pretty sure they've had meetings i'm pretty sure they've talked and discussed things and i'm pretty, pretty sure they're cousins or, yeah you know, you know dan campbell long-term. yeah dan campbell jack campbell a six five athletic linebacker that's just going to do the things that need to be done to be successful and so you stop you stop things you know it, I think I think that's just a beautiful matchup, and like I said, Jack Campbell I think can easily have gone to the Steelers as well, but you know Jack Campbell's going to the Lions. So you got it nineteen. Please, just please, please. All right, so I think that Tampa's all in on the Tankathon. I don't believe that they're trying to win any games. They went and got Baker Mayfield. Yeah, they have Kyle Trask. Yeah, I just I think they're all in. They're gonna fire Todd Bowles next year restart this whole shindig so i'm gonna go with a player who i think could be a core piece and i see kalijah Kansi sitting here tampa bay has been known to have those dogs in the trenches those nadamakin su vita vea type big bodies he's not as big of a body as they are but can still just be a disruption in the middle of the defensive line so i'm going kalijah Kansi here okay the seahawks at 20 Two years ago, a lot of teams passed on Justin Fields, Atlanta, the Panthers, the Broncos, and now they're all regretting it because the Bears traded up and selected an Ohio State quarterback who took some time but was able to get there. And now the Seahawks have done it again. Pete Carroll, go get C.J. Stroud, sit behind Geno Smith, and come take over the NFC West once Geno is long gone. What an ideal situation to have this gem fall in your lap. CJ Stroud ends up in Seattle. Okay. Um, pretty crazy. Pretty nuts uh, so far how this draft has been going. And I have the Ravens pick. And I think I'm going to piss myself off. But first, let's do this Chargers pick. And one thing that they need, one thing that they have been lacking greatly is speed, speed, speed. And so I think about things in a way of like, hmm, how do I want to say this? Um, there's always a reach. There's always a reach. There's always a grab. And I, I think things, things can coexist just by, uh, what am I trying to say? Justin Herbert has a specific arm, I think for specific players. And Call me crazy, but the way the Chargers kind of run their whole offense, run their whole team, it's statistics, it's it's PFF, it's numbers, it's an analysis. It's not that gutty, grinchy, that feeling that you get in your body um, of football. It's all numbers. It's it's the the. There's a word I don't know what word I'm thinking of. The they 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 always take an analytical approach. Jalen Hyatt out of ten- Tennessee is going to the San Diego. Oh my gosh, the LA Chargers. He has dynamic speed. I think he's able to have. He has incredible presence doing uh, crossover routes. He he did what he was asked to do at Tennessee, and people love Hendon Hooker a lot. I don't. There's a reason why he's going to be a 26 year old rookie for a reason. Respectfully, um, and. I think he has NFL strange speed. And so right before the Ravens, they pick up Jalen Hyatt um, out of uh, Tennessee. I like that a lot for them. And then here, the... (sighs) Oof. What are the Ravens going to do? What are the (laughs) Ravens going to do? Who do you want, Miles? I want a lot of guys right now. But who do you want? I mean, you know who I want. Okay, well, I know mm-hmm. who you want. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they're not going to do that. They already have a tight end. But, mm-hmm. they already, but yeah, they do have a tight end, but they're not going to do it. They're not going to do that to you. 
So who else would you want besides him? Who else would you want? Um, <laughs> you know who I'm going to give them because he's such a good corner and I think he's elite. Um, and I just think this, this fits their culture. I just think it's, it's a, oh it's, it's God. a, it's a, it's it. They lost Marcus Peters. And so I think this fits their culture and they're going to need a guy that can handle T Higgins, right? A bigger receiver. So we're going to give the Ravens Joey Porter Jr. Um, I just think that's just a perfect fit and I love it. God, you're doing it one to piss off the Ravens and two to piss off me. What well, actually, eh, I mean, whatever. I'm not pissed off. It's the Ravens. I'll give a shit. Um, okay. Joey Porter goes to the Ravens. We have the Vikings at 23. I was probably going to go Joey Porter Jr. for the Vikings. Depending on how the board falls, they really need to leave this first or second round with a corner. They are depleted at that spot. But since the only one here right now is Emmanuel Forbes, who I'm not super high on, I'm going with a player that I think takes this offense to the next level. I do believe in KJ Osborne. I think he's going to come into his own. Jay Jetta is his him. But I'm taking Zay Flowers here to Minnesota because I think that they could really pull off some Cincinnati-esque top things with that trio of wide receivers. I mean, Kirk is going to Kirk, but I think Kevin O'Connell with the play calling that he's able to do, going to get the most out of those three wide receivers. Pretty deadly trio there. So I'm going Zay Flowers to the Minnesota Vikings. And then we get to Jacksonville. If this guy actually falls this far, I'm going to be pretty surprised. But I'm going Lucas Van Ness here. I think that he can be a huge difference maker. They call him Hercules for a reason. Wouldn't be surprised if he went top 15. But I think he fits in that defense along with Josh Allen to just be screamers off the edge. So I'm going Lucas Van Ness at 24. And not even going to hesitate. I have been wanting this pick out of all of all of. Out of all the picks, <laughs> out of all the picks that I kind of want that aren't Bengals related um, and not Eagles getting Bijan, I love the idea of Jordan Addison going to the Giants. I think it screams Victor um, Cruz lookalike, Victor Cruz reincarnation. He has been getting steamrolled for whatever reason because he doesn't run the fastest 40, but he can still put up 1,600 yards and over what 19 touchdowns on you in a season and then go to another school and you know unfortunately there's injuries and unfortunately his head coach is leak and riley so he's not going to be as involved so with those two things kind of coexisting you know jordan addison we might wake up and be like you know two years three years from now it's like how is he not the you know let's jordan jefferson type energy or justin jefferson type energy so um i mean this happens this always happens so um and then the cowboys i mean this sucks because i would want him to be in a Bengals jersey but there's nothing that kind of makes more sense than michael Mayer to the cowboys with Bijan off the board and it clo- and of course it doesn't say that they have any type of need but jerry jones he's a he's a branding guy and if he can get a, a jason Witten type i mean last time last time zach or zach Dak Prescott was definitely that dude. He and I'm not saying he's not right, but that rookie season, going 13 and three, doing all that hard work. He had Jason Witten as a tight end, and I think Michael Mayer is a Jason Witten spitting image. And so we're going to Michael Mayer to the Dallas Cowboys. There was another tight end on the board that you could have, you know, given them. I'm just you know he doesn't fit, dog. What the what that? What's your deal? He doesn't fit. Dude, you're going to piss me off. Oh, man. All right. We got the Bills at 27. I'm a little shocked at where Trenton Simpson has fallen, according to PFF. He's like the third or fourth linebacker right now, but I think he fits what this Bills defense represents. Fast, physical, had like, what, nine sacks? I can't remember if it was like nine or ten sacks in Clipson this past year. Mm -hmm. Tackling machine, and he's like six two six three as well they need someone to replace tremaine Edmonds, so i'm going trenton sims into the bills here which leaves us to the Bengals. a lot of options miles a lot of options not really just, not really just don't know i mean not a lot of options 
Oh man, Mozzie Smith? Um Josh Downs. Oh Lordy. Well, I mean, I guess if it makes sense, it makes sense. Go on. Get your chode on. Let's let's get Darnell Washington here. Do you want to see my chode? Darnell Washington, tight end of Georgia, six foot thirty thousand, strong, big, fast, elite, ready to be a Bengal, baby. Give me that. Yes, yes. Six feet thirty thousand. Are you serious? Give me that. Darnell Washington to the Bengals. You love it. You heard it here first. It's gonna happen. Before the, I know the Ravens are gonna draft him, bro. I just, I just know it. I just know it. They have two tight ends. They're it, not gonna draft. Yeah, him yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good analysis. I'm telling you, they God. know me, and they just do it. Miles Murphy is going to the Saints. This is exactly what they do. They go D line in the first round. They go trenches. They invest in their trenches. That's just their code. That's just how they do things. Um, we like it. We love it. And then Osiris Torrance is going to the Eagles because. One thing that we do not want to break down is that offensive line because they got Bijan and they are heavily dependent on the run game. So we're going to have a guard interior. We're going to have an interior battle in the trenches um, with competition within the team. But if somebody falls, we're going to be able to refill and reload quickly. We cannot, we cannot abandon the run game. Osiris Torrance, the Eagles. We're going to wrap it up with the Kansas City Chiefs at 31. I'm tempted to go QJ here because I think he fits and has the size that they're missing, but I really believe they're going to make a move and go get D-Hop. So, another pass catcher, I'm going Jameer Gibbs here. I think this is that spot where teams that can get kind of a luxury pick. With Jameer, you don't only get a running back, but you get a dynamic receiver out of the backfield. I know Andy Reid and his football psychotic mind is going to think of some cool old-school wing trip option plays to get him in space i think he fits what they're trying to do and it's speed 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 for kansas city all right so we finish out the draft with jameer gibbs headed to the kansas city chiefs that's super tilting um one through ten tell me who your uh, favorite pick is one through ten i can't not love the Bijan pick man because so it's just the one that makes the most sense even when they historically never do it Howie, just swallow your pride, man, and just just go get him. Just go get him. Yeah, swallow your pride. I, and, yeah, yeah, definitely. And then mine is definitely uh, Anthony Richardson to the Colts. I love Collins so much. He he's gonna be so happy with that one. And then eleven to twenty, who do you got? Eleven through twenty. I mean, low key. I really like this Jack Campbell pick. Yeah. I think that's the highest that we've had him in our mocks so far but he just is a, an epitome of like a lions dan campbell Detroit. linebacker kind of player just tough gets like not afraid to get dirty uh, i think that was a home run i like the jack campbell but i'm gonna also say i really like the jackson smith the jigba to the patriots getting another elite wide receiver out there that way because i want mac jones to save his career i like the kid a lot and I've been banking on him, so I don't want him to make me look like an idiot. 21 to 31. Who is your favorite? Say Flowers can take this Minnesota Vikings offense to a whole new level. I think he fits the yin to the yang of what Jay Jettas already brings to the table in that Kevin O'Connell offense. So I think if they go snag him, again, another home run wide receiver hit for them. Yeah, and then for me, I really like the Jalen Hyde to Tennessee um, and the Miles Murphy. I'm trying to find out which one I like more between the two. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And it's Darnell Washington, the Cincinnati Bengals. That's my favorite pick in this whole draft ever in my life. Darnell Washington to the Cincinnati Bengals is my favorite pick in this entire draft forever. Gracious. Forever. For forever years. And so, yeah, that's about, that's my favorite mm -hmm. pick. So um, thank you guys for tuning in. This is the final RFF mock draft. We will probably, I mean, we could probably, we might post this the day of the draft, maybe the day before, we'll see. Uh, but make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel, follow us on Instagram, we're going to be we're going to be doing a live stream, right, of the mock draft. We're going to be giving out prizes um, the, the whole night, so be there with us. Can't wait to see you guys. Um, bro, see, got anything? No, come hang out Thursday. Um, I think it's what, starts at 6, 7? Yeah. No. 
Yeah. Yeah. Six, That'd seven. Cool. If you ain't got homies and you just want to be a part of a community talking draft, being in the draft, we have a discord, follow it, get in our discord. We'll all be in there. Um, yeah, and, 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 and let's, let's party. Let's, let's freaking party. So we'll see you guys on Thursday. Peace out.